There's so much going on statewide. Um, we're gonna take two perspectives. Um, I'm gonna lean a little bit here on Senator Brownsberger. I wonder if, uh, Will, are, are you able to unmute yourself and jump on into the conversation? And I'm gonna, yeah. thank you for joining us here. Let me make sure I have the right slide open for you. And um, great to see you, Will, as always, a good friend. Thank you. And um, jump right on in and I'll find a screen share for you. I have a photo of you in your biking gear that I wanna share with everybody. All right. <laughs> When I was a kid, um, we used to go down to the Cape for a, um, a few weeks and we, the family had only one car and so my, and my father would be working and so he would leave us down there, my mother and my sister and I, with um, no car on the Cape and uh, my mother and my sister and I would go, you know, miles to the uh, shop or to um, you know, to go, to go swimming or whatever on bikes. And so I think, I think, I, I mean, I've been thinking a lot about uh, those days and how they, you know, how, how, how influential they were in, in sort of my love of cycling. Cycling always has been about freedom. And so I've been, for me, and I've been cycling my whole life now, really, uh, some years more than others, but I've, I've raced uh, in triathlons on a bike. I've, um, I've done years of commuting uh, around around the uh, around all the seasons, and I've done some some pretty long rides. I rode across the country in 2011, and you know the the the, the high of uh, you know finishing a day of you know, 175 miles with a tailwind and just coming over a mountain ridge and seeing the sunset, you know the ecstasy of riding is uh, unparalleled. Um, but when you do the the, the riding enough, uh, you you start to realize that you are a member of a family of a of a um of an extended family of and to pick up i'm picking up on words that ayana used the joy of cycling and the family and the, the family thing is important because you realize that you're part of a family of vulnerable road users um you get hurt from time to time you know people that get hurt badly you know people that die um and um you realize that actually as, as um, inextinguishable as the joy of cycling is, in fact, the dangers are very real and it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it, but you, you start to think a lot about how to, how to reduce those dangers and how to be safe yourself, but also um, how to make the, sa the, the world safer for, for everybody who is a vulnerable road user, whether a pedestrian or cyclist. And uh, so that's been, a, as a legislator for me, I've been in that, in that space for, a number of years now. And um, I want to bring us back to about four years ago, around this time, uh, four years ago, a, a group of us uh, in the legislature, and that included um, a number of uh, several senators, several reps, um, rep, and, and then and then all the all the organizations, you know, Mass Bike and Livable Streets and uh, Vision Zero and some of the municipalities. There were, there were lots of folks there. Tommy Vitolo, I see on this call, I think was in some of those meetings. Um, and I just wanna give a shout out, of course, to you, Galen, and you know, in your, in your various capacities and advocacy in this community. And of course, the organization of MassDOT, Erica Madison, your leadership as well. As I recall, I think you were in those meetings. Abeka Wolfson, Boston Cyclist Union. Um, everybody came together and we had a collaborative conversation, you know, maybe about 30 people in the room uh, to talk about what do we need to do. And we, we, we formed an agenda that um, uh, has really guided us for the past few years of work. And let me, let me talk about that agenda. Really, there were um, three, I'm gonna put the three buckets. The biggest thing really was cell phone use, right? We, we we're, what we're really worried about is, is cell phone, is people on cell phones. I mean, we're, we're most, as cyclists, we're most afraid of uh, automobiles. We're most afraid of, of drivers. They're surrounded by 4,000 pounds of metal. We're not. Um, and it's terrifying when you see somebody uh, rolling down the street with a, with a phone in their hand and going by you and uh, making you, putting you at risk. Um, so that, that got done. We do have a cell phone ban now. So that was kind of the top priority. Uh, and that moved separately and that passed last fall. 
And so that's a big deal. It went into effect this spring. And so it's illegal to drive with your hands on a phone in Massachusetts now. And I think uh, to the extent we, that is changing, you know, to the extent people are um, paying attention to that, I think it's making a difference. Of course, the, it went into effect right as COVID hit. So I think you know, the kind of public awareness that would have been focused on reducing cell phone use is, was, was kind of a sidelined by the whole COVID focus. But um, that's something that I think we can build on over the years to come in, in public awareness and get, getting people to do the right thing. Um, the second big one is the automated, the concept of automated enforcement, um, meaning uh, automated red light enforcement to generally uh, in speed enforcement so that urban roads uh, where, where it's justified uh, would be policed by um, you know, automated enforcement, whether um, radar or cameras, so that people will uh, moderate their speed, observe traffic lights. And these are things that make pedestrians and cyclists safer. That is a much more controversial uh, thing. We've gotten an enormous pushback on that. People are afraid it will be abused. Uh, economically that uh, municipalities will set you know uh, the cameras and so forth to trigger a lot of fines and people will, will get will people be lined up around the courthouse with appeals which did happen in Rhode Island uh, and there's also concerns about privacy you know you're going to take, get a picture taken of you go as you go through an intersection uh, you know how's that going to be used against you so those those concerns have been you know from the right and the left have made the automated enforcement thing very difficult uh, but our hope, we did, we did get it almost passed in the Senate this spring, uh, again, right before COVID hit, um, and uh, it's sort of been sidelined since then. The pushback was strong. Uh, we've, we've really narrowed it down to be something that um, municipalities can try as opposed to something that's going out statewide that'll be carefully monitored as they roll it out. Um, and um, so that's, I don't know whether we'll make progress on that. The last piece is a bucket of things, including the truck side guard legislation, including vulnerable road user legislation, which says you can't drive too close to somebody, you know, and the further you're, the faster you're going, the further more space you got to give them. Um, and a few other things in that bucket. That miscellaneous bucket we have passed once in the Senate. I remain hopeful that the House will pick it up. Um, it's, it does have some good sponsors on the House side. So um, that agenda, we were, I'd say we're about sort of halfway through that agenda. And I think it still guides us. Of course, I want to uh, say that um, that agenda is part of the picture. A lot of the, the rest of the picture is um, the direct investments in safety on the roads. And of course, that happens more at the local level than at the state level, or it's always state in partnership with localities, with the localities sort of driving the bus. So fortunately, we've got good leadership in Boston. We've got good leadership in Cambridge, Somerville, uh, Watertown, uh, Belmont. People are, are trying to make Brookline, people are trying to make cycling work um, in, in the in, inner areas. Uh, but we still have each one of these uh, cycling and safety improvements is a story in itself. Each road is its own story. It's much easier to build, you know, 500 miles of road in the middle of Montana than it is to build a mile of road in the middle of a city because the competing priorities between cycling, buses, cars, parking, um, each, each mile is a story. Um, so I, I just want to close by again thanking um, Galen and Mass Bike for your leadership on so many of these issues and uh, all of you for supporting Mass Bike. And just also to, to turn around and give a shout out back to Ayana and to Senator Markey. Uh, who have both been uh, real leaders on these issues. We're grateful for their support. Um, Ayana has been very strong uh, on, on a range of these issues and, and Ed Markey was key in uh, bringing uh, road, road improvements to Watertown and Belmont that do include cycling. So the, uh, the federal delegation has been, uh, been very, very helpful to us and we're grateful to them. So thank you all for again, for uh, being with us and for supporting um, the work that Mass Bike is doing. Great. Well, thank you so much for all the work you're doing in Beacon Hill. And um, everybody, go to the chat. We've thrown some links in there of the bills that Senator Brownsberger is working on. Um, he's definitely one of our champions for road safety. Um, we would be nowhere without the uh, bike safety bill in 2008-2009. Um, and the- Yeah, going back to that. Have, yeah. yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're grateful for you. We're happy to work with you. And one of the things I do want to mention to the over 200 people on this call is that Will is always available to talk. Um, so feel free to check out his blog. 
shoot him a line. Um, I don't want to inundate your emails here, uh, Senator, but um, you know what? That's all right. Uh, I, I learned so much from the people that reach out to me. That's the nature of my uh, my job is, is, is to listen. Uh, that's the right way to do the job. And I appreciate all the folks that reached out to me through willbrownsberger.com is the way that you can get my email and all the other information there. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, and Will really knows the roads. So as you can see, he, he he's a writer too. So he really gets it. So um, Senator, we're super grateful to have you as a partner, as a friend. And thank you for your time on here too. And, and please do stick around. Thank you. Cool.